Um, all righty. Um, if there's anyone else um, on the call, welcome. Um, and um, you can, uh, let's I'd just like to remind you that uh, if you're dialing in by phone, um, if you want to speak, you can press star nine to raise your hand to speak. Um, or if you're using a computer or tablet, you can click on the raise hand button at the bottom of your screen to let the mm -hmm. chair know, to let me know that you would like to speak. Uh, finally, just as a reminder to everyone, I encourage you to, uh, to mute yourself because it does uh, cut down in background noise. Um, and you can unmute when you've been identified by the chair as having raised your hand. Um, so um, there, uh, this is a time for public comment. If there is any, I'm going to ask for that now. Can I ask, Pat, did you read the piece about the um, convening of the meeting pursuant to Governor Baker's? I did. I just did. Okay. <laughs> All, right. All right. I, I would also add a refinement to that um, just for the edification of the this group right now. Uh, the executive order also uh, authorizes all members of the public body to participate in the meeting remotely. Um, and um, also, and this was news to me as of this morning, the open meeting laws requirement that a quorum of the body uh, and that the chair be physically present is also suspended. So that means that we can still do business today uh, if we if we choose, uh, but looks like one, two, three, four, we have four, four of us, am I right one? Yeah, four of us right now. Uh, and hopefully there'll be others to join us, but we still can move forward. Um, so let's see, I wanna make sure I have other things here. Um, so I call this meeting to order. And um, so we'll, um, and we've asked for public comment. Um, so, um, Let's, let's head on. Uh, if you should have your agenda in front of you um, and the attachments uh, as well that I sent to everyone. Um, so um, let's start out with updates and looking ahead uh, from Mary Beth. Great. Uh, good morning, everyone. It's good to see you all. Uh, we continue to soldier on here, even though we remain closed to the public. Uh, we are still here every day. And I like to remind that to people as often as possible because I still get calls from the public um, and they're surprised that we're here. They, I think that there still is, even though it's been in the newsletter and we try to mention all the meetings, lots of folks still think that we are not here. So I, I just like to keep reiterating that for everybody, that uh, staff is fully present every day and we're available if anyone has any questions or issues. Um, I would just like to bring a few highlights um, to the community and to all of you is uh, first of all for flu shots. So we can't overemphasize enough how important it is that folks get flu shots uh, this season. Uh, there's all kinds of medical uh, advisories about that and the confluence of uh, COVID and flu and the similarity in the symptoms. So in the newsletter that is going out, we have all of the local areas where they are doing flu clinics at CVS and Target, et cetera. And if you have any questions, you can also call Karen Rainin, our um, senior health services nurse. You can call us at 259-3060, but Karen will be participating in this meeting and, and she can share that information. But if anybody has any questions about flu shots or accessing them, I'm also uh, meeting next week with the Musanti Health Center to discuss uh, further needs for flu and, and flu immunizations and other services. So if there's something additional, I'll make sure that I let you all know. 
Um, we continue to have masks and provide those for free because masks obviously are becoming a, an integral part of our everyday life. And it's important that people not only have a mask, but have several masks. And certainly ones that are washable are advisable. So I know a lot of people use the paper masks. And if you use them repeatedly, there is some diminishment in their effectiveness. So if anybody needs a cloth mask, I continue to work with volunteers uh, as widely as Northampton who uh, support us and have dropped off another uh, 60 masks. So please uh, contact us anytime. Um, mobile office hours, what we have found, um, particularly in outreach with regard to some of our um, food programs that folks sometimes in need are reluctant to come here to ask for help. Um, some of the communities and populations that used to come and participate, for instance, in bread and produce, um, we, we have not had contact with. And so we have been working with community leaders and members and also town hall who they've been participating in the mobile um, food markets to figure out ways to reach people um, who might have questions or a need and are reluctant to come here. And I've had a number of um, interactions with folks who, who are reluctant to um, sort of formally interact with us for lots of good reasons. So we are, it's announced in the newsletter, we're gonna be doing some mobile outreach where we're going out with the COA van. And with that, uh, we will be holding outdoor office hours. And I would emphasize that they are, they are not intended as sort of um, social events, that they are going to be very brief encounters with people to, do, to leave us with an inquiry and contact information. And then we're gonna follow up and continue to pursue whatever that inquiry is. So it will be outdoor, it will be mandatory masks. If you don't have a mask, we'll give you a mask. It'll be socially distanced and very brief um, meetings. But we wanna make sure that we're following up and making sure that all the members of the community are participating and aware of it. It's in a variety of places, including um, Applewood, Greenleaves Condominiums, Rolling Green, Village Park. We're going to the South Amherst Common. So um, some of the places are not located, are not listed in our newsletter because they're more informal um, opportunities for us to show up and do some assistance. So if anybody has any further input on the council that they'd like to share with me, this is where I'd like you to show, please let us know. We've scheduled it for just one hour so that they would be very brief um, opportunities. Um, we do have a YouTube channel. So we have a, if you Google the town of Amherst, Amherst Senior Center uh, on the YouTube um, site, you will come up with a list of all of our caring conversations. And those were conversations that we had around COVID and keeping yourself healthy. So it, it deals with a variety of issues from behavioral health to physical health, conversations with the geriatrician, um, our senior health services nurse, which we sh uh, Pat was really kind to share with you. So those are all curated for reference. And if anybody um, you know wants to to tap into them, I I would I would suggest you do. It's re some really great viewing, <laughs> informal. Uh, it's not really a TV show, so you can make of it what you like, and then follow up with the, any questions that you have, including things like how to execute a healthcare proxy and documents that would support you in your health. Um, I know that there are a number of questions. Foot care, we are not able to, to provide that. We remain um, providing the information. It's in the newsletter for those providers who used to come here and are providing in-home services. So I've, I've outlined that. There were a number of questions. For medical equipment, we're still referring everybody to Stavros. Stavros has our equipment right now. And uh, again, they are free. They deliver. They have a hospital grade sanitization process. Um, they are our partners. We're, we have developed a more extensive program of partnership with them. Um, the two of us, you know, they, they also help now uh, with our meal delivery. Um, and then they had some emergency funds that we worked with them to support some seniors accessing for prescriptions and things of that nature. So they have, we have really uh, buttressed that engagement. We also are moving forward with our technology loan program where we have nine iPads that have been ordered by the town on our behalf using um, both some grant money and the funds that we've raised. Um, so I'm looking forward to getting those in circulation. We have a number of individuals who have called. So we're starting a, a list of, of those individuals and we hope to be able to add some additional technology to that. So nine is just our beginning space. I know that we will be able to, we will be purchasing some more. 
down the line. Um, the census, I, there was an inquiry um, Pat had forwarded to me about the status of the census. And what I have been able to obtain um, is that the participation rate in the town of Amherst um, at this point in time um, is 66.7% have responded to the U.S. Census. In comparison, um, last year, I mean, last round of 2010, it was 70.8%, so that there is a lesser percentage. The statewide average is 69%. And um, so I was not able to obtain, I, I contacted uh, folks who have been involved in that process, whether um, our particular community of older adults um, you know, are, are participating in a lesser number or not, or if there are some other populations that are uncounted. So I can't report out on that, but I can indicate that there have been some vigorous efforts along the way, certainly through us and also the, the census workers and the enumerators have been out uh, door to door. Um, you know, we worked with the Meals on Wheels clients. We also uh, distribute information. We had some tabling that was here before COVID and then post COVID staff, we all um, took a long list of individuals and we were calling and placing calls. We had looked at the issue of phone banking. I know that um, Rosemary has been very active in this through her work with the League of Women Voters, but we had decided that it was better to use our own database because we were calling people in Amherst that we knew and, and there would be probably more likelihood that they would pick up the phone um, if they saw that it was the Amherst Senior Center. So we tried to alert our community, but there still is time. So if anybody um, sees neighbors or friends, um, and, and that's, that's always, that's a hard thing these days, but if you see anybody, you could say, hey, did you have, did you finish your census? And I believe it's, um, it closes October 31st. So it, there still is time to participate in that. There's voting information in the newsletter that is going out in terms of the locations for early in person and election day. Early in person, I would just emphasize for anybody um, who would like to participate in that. I know it begins October 17th and it goes on for approximately two weeks and it's being held here at the Bang Center. So uh, we would we will be the location for anyone who wants to participate in mail in, um, pardon me, vote in person. The ballot box for people who have requested an early ballot and want to just hand it into the town hall remains located on the Main Street side of the town hall and is available 24 seven. It's under camera uh, observation. So it's very, very safe. So I know some people have asked me questions about that. Um, so that um, is ongoing. And then the last thing I just wanted folks to know about is that um, we are doing a drug take back um, program. So that has always been a very important and popular program within our community. And um, it, it also protects our environment rather than dumping medication that's old or unused in a toilet and it goes and it seeps into our water system. So the drug take back program will be Saturday, uh, I believe it's October 21 from 10 to 2 at Wildwood School. So that is typically something that's it's being sponsored by the Northwestern District Attorney's Office. Um, I will be there on Saturday that day. And I hope if anybody has any old medication um, that they can bring it and dispose of it in a safe way. And that's the highlight. Thank you. Unless I, if, and if you have any other questions, I'm trying to, Pat had sent me a number of questions. I'm trying to make sure that I cover those in the report. <laughs> Go ahead, Rosemary. Could you un unmute, please? A few questions. Um, I did the newsletter so fast that I didn't read it carefully, but I wondered if you emphasize the um, high dose that senior uh, uh, older people should ask for the high dose flu vaccine. No, no, I did. You mean for the flu shot? Yes. Yeah, no, no, I didn't make any, any recommendation as to that. Okay, and then my other question was, um, the Musanti Health Center, is, how active is that? Is that open all the time or what is the... Um, yeah, so I, I, I had that same question, Rosemary, because particularly during a pandemic, healthcare and access to it is so important. So I actually, I, I've been down there a couple of times. What I can report um, is that 
Uh, they have had a doctor, the medical director for the Hilltown Health Center is now the covering physician, John Liebman, and he covers uh, the practice. And there's also a, a regularly dedicated nurse practitioner who is now down there. Formerly, if you recall in the fall, uh, both of those physicians departed. So there was a, a period of time at which they weren't accepting new patients. They are now accepting new patients. So uh, I think that that's a, that's a good move forward. And then the other, the other piece is when you're asking about sort of the operations, um, they have, I, I think it's, it's advertised in my conversations that they're, that they're there um, most every day, eight to four. So, so I, talk, I think that there's um, some flexibility within, they, they seek to be there every day, but I don't know that they're necessarily there every day, the entire sort of like an eight hour shift. And um, as I mentioned, I'm gonna be meeting with um, the executive director, the COO, and some of the practitioners next week to talk about sort of what the need is within the community. Um, and of course, my interest is in serving the older adults <laughs> in the community and people who are close by. And also, you know, if there's a, you know, a need for an immunization clinic, et cetera. So I can, I can uh, report more information probably by the next meeting about what that might look like of a, a sort of a greater partnership and outreach so. Excellent, thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions for Mary Beth? I want to welcome again uh, both Mary Elmer on, on this uh, in this gathering and um, and Karen Raynan who just joined us as well. Um, and um, so I think um, just in the interest of supporting Karen's time, uh, we'll just move her up on the agenda a bit just to, uh, I, I thought it would be a good idea for us to have a, a chance as, as we connect to larger communities of seniors um, to have a good idea First of all, to meet Karen, if we have, if you haven't already done that, but also to get a feel for, uh, to welcome her and thank her for <laughs> what we know is a, a busy time for her, but also to, to to just get a better feel from her about the kinds of things that, uh, the kinds of calls that are coming in and what we can do to support our messaging uh, in the work that she does. Um, so take it away, Karen. Uh, well, good morning, everybody, uh, on this chilly morning. <laughs> I pulled out my, uh, pulled out a sweater I haven't worn in a little while. Um, so, uh, yes, yeah, so I'd like to, sort of like Mary Beth, I'd like to answer the calls. Pat had asked me specific things to, uh, questions to answer. And so what kind of calls am I receiving? Well, it won't be a surprise to you that it's mainly questions about COVID. Um, just sort of all different questions. Sometimes it's for a person for themselves or sometimes it's for a relative. Um, and I do think that, um, I could be wrong about this, but some, I do feel that people feel like because the building is closed, that we're closed, that we're not available. And so trying really hard, and that's, I wanted to put that out to all of you, um, just some creative ideas how we can um, get that message out there. Well, shoot, no, the building is closed, but we're here. I am here on a part-time basis, uh, six hours a week, but it's amazing what you can get accomplished in six hours. So, um, so my phone is not ringing off the hook. <laughs> um, and, you know, so it would be great. Um, I'd be glad to um, entertain lots of different calls. Um, so I'm eager to hear um, you know, what you all think, if there are different ways we can get out there. Certainly Mary Beth has um, done all sorts of outreach and with the newsletter. I've also, um, I had uh, business cards made up and those went out to all the Meals on Wheels uh, recipients. And also I dropped some off at the, um, with the police chief. And also I was gonna drop them off at the fire, um, fire department just sort of trying to get the message out that we're here and that um, I'm certainly available for, for people to call me. Um, so, um, and I think 
an interesting question, Pat, that you asked her, how my service is different from the primary care. Well, I think they probably overlap um, in some ways. You know, certainly um, my uh, phone line is not, I'm not able to make um, in-person visits at all at this time, but I am available by phone. Um, and if it's an urgent matter, that's really, that's not, um, that's not the messages I should be receive. I mean, certainly if somebody is calling urgent, you know, urgently, I refer them right away to either 911 or primary care, but I'm here more as health advice, education, support. Um, and I know it, it makes sense that people are concerned also about, you know, their blood pressure, how that's doing. And I do have a limited number of um, automatic blood pressure cuffs. I did drop off a cuff at um, outside, of course, a person's house on their bench uh, and with instructions how to use this automatic blood pressure cuff. So certainly I have that available. Um, so I am going to be giving um, a talk about diabetes. Um, I do have a specialty in, in diabetes. I have a certification. I'm going to be giving sort of a general talk. It will be Zoom of course, <laughs> on November 16th um, at 10 o'clock. And so, um, but do, so do people have, um, do you have questions or I'd be glad to hear different ideas that you might have as to how we can, you know, better reach seniors. Any, any thoughts about that? Go ahead, Sue. Uh, so how about an article in, in the Gazette introducing her to the community? Um, well, certainly that'd be an interesting idea. Um, I know Mary Beth has been um, working on putting a blurb, like a general blurb um, in the paper. Is it with a bulletin, Mary Beth, or? Um, yeah, 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 That that is a good idea, Sue, because people, I do find, when I put something, when something landed in the Amherst Bulletin, I got a whole slew of calls. So, uh, I didn't even get the Bulletin, but I get the Gazette. Oh, really? You don't get the Bulletin? No, I haven't had it. Ever. Well, I go on, I, I get the paper online. Yeah, yeah. So Interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, we could definitely do that. And, you know, I, I would also add that Karen has been exceptional at, when you talk about creative ways, you know, she has gone out delivering meals. So gone to meet our individuals who are um, isolated and are um, unable to leave their home. She participates in the lunch, you know, to go hand out. So she's out at the wall talking to people. So there are lots of ways, um, you know, that she's been trying to make herself available and spread the word. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, we're always looking for, for new opportunities or, or new ways of engagement. I think um, I would, um, Norma, um, Halleck and I uh, co-taught um, a, a course, uh, not a medical course directly. We were actually uh, talking about balance uh, for seniors. Um, and um, But one of the, ki the kinds of questions we would often get sometimes were really basic questions uh, that had to do with the local access to medical care. Um, often people are confused about when should I be calling the ER <laughs> or, and, and I'm sorry, calling an ambulance? That's always a big question. They're worried about how much it's going to be. Um, they're, uh, you know, what counts as an, a true emergency? Um, that, so there's certainly, um, you know, that that is something that really comes up. And then also if I have a, let's say I have, um, oh, um, uh, muscle spasms. If I go to the ER, will I be, um, to, if I go to Cooley Dickinson, let's say, uh, for, um, can I, um, am I gonna be separated from the COVID patients? There's a fear that going to the hospital mm -hmm. is going to expose me and I'll, then I'll end up, you know, with, muscle spasms and COVID, and that wouldn't be so fun. So uh, th that's, I think, 
um, you know, just people are constantly worried about what's going to be covered and not covered. I guess the third thing I would, would mention is this, and um, this is a deeper conversation, I think, for sure. But with respect to convalescent equipment, my husband has some upcoming surgery. Um, he was looking, he was told he would need um, a walker for a while. He's, he, it took him 11 phone calls. Uh, my husband is a retired lawyer. He's a sophisticated person, <laughs> but we're still relatively new to, to the, you know, to town, but we've been here for five years. But the point is that, um, um, and many of these providers have been out of business for five, six, seven years. Uh, they're no longer doing equipment. That's not a problem. That's not a problem that you can solve or deal with. But I think that sometimes I think about, um, especially documenting your training and experience in documenting the kinds of problems, unanswered problems that senior seniors have is so vital a piece of looking at where there are gaps in services and in, in, in public education. Um, and um, I'm not sure what the answer is exactly, but I just want to pose that because I think um, that those questions have uh, often present people who wish to seek medical help with tremendous challenges and obstacles to care and um, you know they they need to be addressed around you know as around po in a policy framework certainly but but practically as well so and I think Pat um, as you were speaking I was thinking about this because of the virus I think a lot of times that can make people feel more for sure, more alone, more isolated, um, you know, whatever they're concerned with, they keep going around and around in their head and just sort of um, not maybe reaching out that they normally would. And um, I had an opportunity to be part of um, the resilience group um, by Bruno Martins at the university. And that was fascinating. It was just really wonderful, sort of mind expanding, um, talking about mindfulness and just how to be more present in the moment and being with other people. So, uh, but it's just interesting, I think that, yeah, because of the closed in sort of fearful, uh, then that makes people not want to, you know, reach out as much. And so you have a lot of different interesting thoughts and ideas. And regarding the equipment, Mary Beth might have mentioned, I know Stavros has, mm -hmm. uh, right, that they have some equipment mm -hmm. that available, but a lot of people don't know those things. Like you said, even your husband, 11 phone calls, you know, um, just, and a lot of times, um, so, yeah, so I think the idea going back to, um, I apologize, I can't remember um, the woman you name who mentioned it about doing an article in the paper. I think that would be great. And do you think the bulletin would be uh, better or, or the Gazette? or both. I know sometimes they duplicate their articles. Mm. The Gazette. It, it, the Gazette. It's a wider, a wider spread of people. Right. Okay. I see Mary. Mary, Mary you've got your <laughs> hand up. <laughs> I don't know how to put my hand up on this Zoom thing. So oh, this okay. physical, is there a button you push? There can be. It's often at, it depends on if you've got a tablet or a regular computer, um, but yeah. Okay. Well, I'll ask my question anyway. Um, do we ever do anything with the Amherst Survival Center? Or is that a different group that we don't work with that much? Because it's homeless, it's elderly, it's people in need. Um, I'm just thinking they would definitely could use your services, Karen. Um, but I don't know if we if we um, work with that group. Mm. Yeah, it's changed a lot. I, I think Mary Beth's probably going to chime in here. Um, I used to volunteer at their medical clinic, which was twice a week, which was wonderful. So it was really people from all over, people from the university. Um, people would bring in their relatives who were visiting just for this free medical clinic. 
Um, it was on Mondays and Thursdays. And that's really, of course, they don't have that right now. And their main focus is about food distribution. Um, Mary Beth, do you want to? Uh, but certainly, uh, you, you gave me an idea. I'm sorry that I, um, that certainly um, I should pop on over there and just give them my card in terms of if if people have questions or just to let them know that we're here. And the survival center, just I know when I was there on Thursdays, it's it's all people from all over, all different needs, all different uh, intergenerational. Um, that would come to the survival center. I don't know if the complexion of people has changed a lot since during COVID. Yeah, no, I think uh, the two things that I do know is that the survival center, as you, I think as you alluded to, has really gone in the direction of just focusing on food because there's such a, a very huge and critical need. And their goal for this year is to double their um, distribution of food, both in terms of communities and total volume. So they have sort of collapsed the other kinds of services that, that they typically performed, um, you know, with regard to shopping in their shop and the medical clinic and things like that. They are not running any of those services. So I know that that isn't as, um, you know, as opportune, but I, I could, you know, I certainly can inquire. I don't know in, in, my, um, in my communication. So I communicate with them around food a lot. Um, and I, I think that the, the other folks that sort of used to do more like case management and things like those positions are not, uh, they've been shifted all to food and food pantry management, coordination, distribution. So, but I can certainly let them know that if, if there is a medical question of an older adult, you know, we can certainly do that. The one thing I would let you know is that we are not having, pursuant to sort of our, our standard operating procedures, um, Karen isn't seeing patients face-to-face -face for clinical work. So she's only doing things virtually. So, um, she, you know, we can make, I can certainly reach out and make them aware, you know, if, if someone comes in and there's some kind of, you know, a conversation or, or whatnot around that. And I think the difference is, is that the, as I've observed when we're there, um, the interactions, like, you know, how you people would just hang out all day in the, um, in the you know, dining area. So there were lots of conversations and now it literally is, you know, come in and, and, and just pick up your food and, and you're heading out because people can't linger and stay. So I don't know how much they're having those kinds of conversations, but it's certainly a great idea, Mary. Mm -hmm. um, and I hadn't thought about that one to, to just make them generally aware of, of that supportive services. The place that we're, I, I think that we used to draw mainly from really has been more just the, the Clark House and Ann Whalen. Um, and, I, and I think some of that, the, the reticence is what Pat mentioned about people are, people are reluctant even to just ask the questions. They're not sure of what to do. They're not sure of statuses. They're not sure of our status. So it has been very helpful to have Karen interacting with them the, you know we have a large group who come over every day for lunch and um, so and we can also create some more flyers for those locations because because flyers are effective regardless of you know good old flyers <laughs> still help us out so um, and if anybody has follow-up please please let us you know please let us know if there's any other ideas um, and and Karen is going to come out and do the mobile office hours with us so we're all taking different dates. That's terrific. Um, I just want to, oh, I see other questions. So, uh, Rosemary, can you speak up? <laughs> Before we left, leave the topic, I just want to encourage all of you to watch the very nice YouTube of the interview that Mary Beth has mm -hmm. with Karen, introducing Karen. It's very informative. It was yes. really nice to meet you that way, Karen. Even though we have met in person, mm -hmm. there were many things that I learned about you and it was very valuable. Wonderful interview. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, I'm into that. And Karen, you wanted to add one more thing? And, yeah. yeah, okay. I was just gonna say, um, so um, my husband and I got a puppy in April and our idea was to, um, I wanted the puppy to be uh, a therapy dog and a comfort dog to people. So 
he's in intensive training, I think probably me more than the dog. <laughs> but um, we're going to be starting our third puppy class. And so hopefully, you know, before long, you'll be able to see the little fella, his name is Scout, um, downtown with me uh, to be able to, to meet people, you know, still at a distance, but to have more of a, a presence. And he's a sweet fella. He's a, a cobber dog, which is like an Australian Labradoodle. And it um, and they're purposely bred hypoallergenic just to be that, to be a comfort to people. So, um, so I'm working on it, <laughs> you know, I'm working on it with them, but so you'll, and I've done a couple of videos encouraging people to get out and walk and be out and about and uh, scout is with me, but I'll be doing more videos so people can meet them and get ideas where to, to walk and get some fresh air. Thank you so much, Karen, for the work you're doing and uh, for spending some time with us this morning. We really appreciate it. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> okay, so moving on, um, let's go. I uh, let's go back up to uh, highlights from the chair's report. That's. I think that stuff is really pretty self-explanatory. Um, the um, but I did want to just. Um, I just wanted to add that, uh, add a thank you to um, to Rosemary, um, who um, uh, has pro provided some um, uh, great information, just uh, kind of the history of the relationship between um, the history of um, the the friends of the Emerson Senior Center, and that was I know that briefing was really helpful to me and kind of understanding the relationship. Um, and um, as we go forward, so many things are changing. And uh, um, because of COVID and we're taking a fresh look at everything. So um, I really appreciated her doing that. Um, and so with those, I just started the, I think uh, the chair's reports, there's no requirement for me to do that, but I, I wanted to help uh, council members know, and also, yeah, well, just kind of what what I've been up to uh, in support of, um, take, you know, uh, during this um, strange, quiet time, um, you know, the kinds of issues and concerns that I've been pursuing and and doing on behalf of all of you, all of us, really. Um, so I just. I just mentioned that. Um, and that's probably a good segue to go to item 3D, uh, which is proposed bylaw changes. And I wanted to- Sue's hand is up, I just- Oh, I'm sorry, Sue, go ahead. And I, I look like Yvette is to, too. I just wanna thank you for sending your report ahead of time and letting us know all the stuff you're trying to figure out. So appreciate it. Oh, well, thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> okay, so- and that hand is up, Pat, for you. Okay. You know, I'm not seeing, wait a second, hold on here. Whose hand is up? Yvette has a raised hand. Oh, okay, okay. I'm not seeing your raised hand, but I'm glad to hear about it. Yvette, go ahead. Can't hear you, Yvette. Can you unmute or? We're still we're we're still looking to hear you. I think you're muted. Oh, I see. I see her hand up, but I don't see. Uh, so I just sent her a message to unmute. Okay. All right. Okay. Good. Thanks. Right, audio problem. Yep. Okay. Hello. Oh yes. Hi. I'm sorry. I had a technical problem there. Um, I was uh, just thinking about. Um, I was wondering whether there could be a billboard. Uh, Mary Beth, you mentioned that you draw. I think a lot of um, inquiries. You didn't say that exactly, but from the Clark House and Whalen community. Mm -hmm. And I don't know who is in town walking about, um, but I was wondering if 
you have any kind of easel outside of the the bank center where you know you know like sort of restaurants say what they have for lunch today or dinner um yeah. because I, I know you have that um that digital um bulletin board in the lobby upstairs yeah. or is it in, inside yeah. so I just wondered about an easel, a pop-up easel. Uh, you know, it would have to be big enough that people would see, and I could always share some information with somebody. Well, I saw this, and you might be able to call them and find out. Just another way that's not um, a newspaper, radio, interestingly. I don't know who listens to radio. But, but anyway, that was my uh, thought, the easel idea. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, I have to tell you, I love that, uh, Yvette. We do have, I think they call them sandwich boards, those big plastic oh, yes. um, things that are exactly. sort of like an A-frame. And we yeah. do have one out there because we had to list all of the rules for social distancing for people coming to do the grab and go. Perfect. But that would be a great idea to create one with like up-to-date news. Um, and we could oh, put years. it, you know, we could even do two because you are right. We get, a, we get an awful lot of foot traffic, mm -hmm. um, by and through here. So, um, you know, some people go by that back door and then other people go by the side by Johnny's Tavern. Mm -hmm. So even if we had two of those, that would be a great idea. Um, all right, cool. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Um, okay. So let me just, you know, one of the things uh, that uh, I have been uh, dwelling in are the bylaws. Um, and um, so, and I noticed that, um, I guess what I want to say is that um, I made a proposal, um, which I think, in, first of all, I recognize that bylaw changes are serious matters. And uh, as I uh, continue to look at how amendments are made to bylaws, by our own bylaws, that they require 14 days announcement in advance of anything official. And that um, they, uh, and we would certainly, even though they're under uh, the executive uh, order, we can not have a quorum uh, we can take action without a quorum. I still think that it's it's vital for us to have a conversation about making any changes to the uh, bylaws that involve all uh, as many of our members as can participate. So um, the simple proposal really has to do is to delete the sentence, there shall be no votes in absentia. And um, that and the and the idea behind that that I wanted to dis, us to discuss is really um, has to do with uh, trying to increase participation and access um, by seniors who may be homebound, uh, who may be um, uh, um, have other impediments in their lives, but are, are able to connect with us via Zoom. And um, yes, I understand um, that many inst uh, our institutions, um, public institutions may, may be being um, uh, changed culturally forever as a result of COVID. Uh, there's a lot of rethinking about how can we um, increase access and civic participation. Um, so that that's kind of, I would say that's sort of the spirit of things. And it's also, it's not, it's not only related to um, uh, increasing uh, forms of participation um, by seniors, even post COVID, but it also, um, it also recognizes that votes in particular um, could potentially take place because we have this technological vehicle, uh, Zoom or, uh, or 
phone or other mechanisms that would allow us to do business in the summertime when people may be on vacation but wish to tune in to, to for a vote and a, a significant vote or they may be that you know recovering from a, co a cold that they don't want to share but they still want to participate in conversations so that's the spirit of this and um, Mary Beth and I have been talking a bit about um, the layers of executive um, uh, certainly that, that or originate layers of uh, executive authority that originate uh, all the way up to the governor's office. And so the question, my question is, and I'm, we still don't know the answer to this exactly, is uh, whether we as a local appointed, government appointed uh, body uh, can, uh, we, whether we have the authority to change our bylaws in a way that institutionalize this form of participation um, that in particular would in, meet some particular needs of seniors. Um, um, yeah, <laughs> I guess that, that's, I would, I would say that. So I wonder if any, any uh, I, I see um, Rosemary um, putting her hand up. Any, any other comments about that? I think it sounds like a very good idea. Um, I think it would be something to be checked out with the town manager first to see if that, because I don't, I don't think the town council allows that, for instance, for for remote votes. And um, it it might be wise to check that with the town first. Um, I think that your proposed text is is something to present to them. Um, I would say that each council member present in person or virtually or remotely rather than via Zoom. For instance, there are other vehicles that you can use like YouTube Live and we yeah. don't know that we're always going to use Zoom. Of course. Google apps as well. So if you use the, the term virtually or remotely, mm -hmm. it would it would probably be better. Mm -hmm. shall, virtually or remotely shall be entitled to one vote with respect to any motion that may come before a meeting. Okay, okay. So we, so my intent, my, my intention is to check into this uh, further. Um, and uh, I think communicate the, some of the, I don't want to say they're not exactly unique needs of seniors, but I think that um, there are uh, illness, disability, care of spouse uh, are something that um, that many se uh, senior citizens face, <laughs> and um, nevertheless uh, would. Uh, might well wish to participate fully. So that's, that's the idea uh, mm -hmm. between that. So I also noticed that um, there's a provision and I haven't uh, incorporated this yet in sort of the draft, a draft text, but uh, for, uh, uh, we, we have a provision in our bylaws that uh, invite people to speak to us. Uh, the town council I noticed has uh, a provision that allows people to uh, send a statement in writing, uh, um, and then there's a deadline uh, for that. And so I'm thinking that with, that's another yet another um, form of participation that's may you know could could be implemented as well. That since the town council offers that, we may people may wish to enter something into the record, so to speak. Did, I, I'm wondering if that makes sense. And Sue, you might have some thoughts about that. Sorry, I, I, I'm lost in what your question is. <laughs> well, the question is whether or not um, we should provide um, explicitly uh, opportunities for people to submit comments in writing to the council. Oh similar to what the town council has available. 
in a nutshell that's it yeah yeah and and pat i can certainly help to follow up with that about how how that language should go like whatever the language is for the town council um sure. and i and i just wanted folks to know that that this was a conversation that that pat and i were having because i was aware that there was a shift with the pandemic and prior to this point in time prior to march you were unable to have participation in a meeting remotely so the few things that we've been able to just immediately find was that on march 12th of 2020 governor baker issued an executive order and this all pertains to the open meeting law so the open sure. meeting law is what governs sort of participation and whether it has to be in person in the type and the form so on on march 12th in that executive order um and i have not been able to obtain a copy of that yet so that's what i've been trying to track down uh, that's what enabled public bodies to carry out their responsibilities remotely. So that was the first time in which a bod public bodies and for meetings were authorized to participate remotely. Um, and it also allowed that a quorum, um, says the open meeting laws requirement that a quorum of the body and that the chair be physically present at the meeting is suspended. Mm -hmm. So, and I didn't know, uh, oftentimes with an executive order or many of the executive orders he's issued during this pandemic, it is, there's language at the, at the, the bottom of it that indicates the duration of this. So it, I, usually mm -hmm. it is until a certain day or 90, 90 days after the expiration of his declaration of an emergency. So we're just trying to find out those pieces. Mm -hmm. One of the possibilities would be if you change that language to provide for remote and virtual participation, you could say just as comma as permissible by law so that, um, you know, I, I think everybody thinks in municipalities and, and, and um, governing boards that that um, after this pandemic, probably remote participation will become the the whatever the standard <laughs> so perhaps it won't it won't revert back mm -hmm. but that would be one way to cover it i think mm -hmm. as an exception is to say look we know during the law right now it's permissible so if we just add that language i think you'd be covered no matter what happens mm -hmm. so that's an option yes. my guess is that it will become both and because if um and really that's really along the lines of the values prom the values statement of paul bockelman which is to um, and notice and, and look for opportunities to increase uh, openness and wider participation. And that is definitely the spirit that we're going for. I don't have anything more to add myself on that. I think I will uh, at our next meeting. You'll hear more. I Stay tuned, I guess, is what I would say about that. Um, and uh, I, I think, actually, Mary Beth, that I should say, the um, the section of the open meeting law, the suspension, mm -hmm. of the, is uh, is is that uh, GLC thirty A section eighteen, I think mm -hmm. is the that's the open meeting law. But his executive order, I think uh, Angela Mills <clears throat> has that specific text, mm -hmm. uh, I believe. So um, anyway. Okay. Well, I will make sure that I get you the answer. I'm, I'm sorry, I was pressed. I was pressed for time. I wasn't able to to fully. No, no so, worries. I think yeah. this is a work in progress. I just wanted to let share um, current thinking and invite conversation from other members of the council on this topic. Um, the second is really has to do with, and this is an opening conversation about um, proposed um, standing committees. Um, as I was looking at the bylaws, um, I had um, a lot of questions about our committee structure. And, um, and I think for purposes of this meeting, I'm just gonna call people's attention to the bylaws, uh, uh, comments on the committee structure. And it just struck me as, um, unusual for a body of nine people to have five committees uh, specifying you know three members of each and requiring notes and, and and so forth I think it seemed like a an overreach and and a um, I, I guess what I'm I'm cons um, and so those of you of, of you who have served uh, on the council uh, 
much longer than I have, um, may wish to, to comment on that. But I think uh, what, what I'm proposing is that um, we uh, bring, a, 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 I want to say, a proposal perhaps for consolidating our meeting, stru our meeting structure to, to, to define whether our existing structure even it exists, <laughs> uh, uh, needs, needs some changes. Uh, because as we add new, new members, um, we want to be able to um, engage them in, in some of the subtasks of the council um, through, through a committee structure, but one that's working more efficiently and effectively. And so um, that's, and, and you've, I sent you the questions that I have um, about our committee structure, um, and that should be, um, I, um, I think, yeah, there, there are just a number of things that need some attention. Uh, we don't need to take up our council time for discuss that, uh, to discuss that, but I'm, I'm wondering if there's any of you on this call who might be interested in helping me um, and us <laughs> all together taking a look at our committee structure. I would contemplate some phone conversations. Rosemary? Yes, yeah, so I would be interested in helping with that. All right, thank you. I do have a few comments about uh, the um, committee structure, but if you prefer, we can wait with that for another meeting. Okay, I think we'll, we'll continue to bring people into that conversation. You'll notice in one example I did include that's an important one to um, operating from, and I'm just speaking personally here as a, a member and not chair, um, a committee on inclusion and diversity is something that I think would be um, of real value on, uh, to all, all of our work um, as we go forward on the council and, um, and consistent with um, uh, Paul Bachelman's leadership as well, but it's separate uh, regardless of who is who is town manager, I, it stands on its own as something that I think um, helps to put make practical and real uh, our values of inclusion and and open arms at the senior center and creating places for everyone to be welcome. So um, we'll work on that, and um, I'll I'll be you know, knocking on the doors of other council members uh, as well um, by phone, uh, inviting participation in this conversation on our committee structure, because I think it, it's essential and long overdue. So um, any, any more conversation about that? Um, We'll move on, if not, hearing none, we'll move on to item four, an action item. Um, at previous meetings, I did ask and explore um, whether uh, uh, any members would be interested in uh, being, uh, serving as the council's, uh, the town of Amherst council's um, uh, representative at Highland Valley, on the board of Highland Valley Elder Services. Um, no one else stepped forward. I am willing to do that. And um, so what I need in order to make that happen um, is for a motion to, uh, to that effect, uh, uh, designating uh, me as the representative to the uh, Helen Valley Elder Services Board. So I need a motion from one of you. <laughs> I make a motion that Pat Rector be our the Amherst representative to the Highland Valley Elder Services Board. Is there a second? Sue, thank you. Is there any discussion? Okay, shall we vote? <laughs> 
Uh, those in favor, signify by raising your hand. And Yvette, you can speak up if, you, if you're in favor. Are you there, Yvette? Let's see. She's muted again. Yeah. I'll send her another message. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. Or if she, if she indicates by raising her hand, I can see that, so I would let you know. Okay. All right. Okay. I have a technological delay. All right. Okay. I have one oh. question. Are we sufficient number for a quorum? Well, the, again, I, just as I mentioned, the open meeting laws require requirement of a quorum of the body and the chair is suspended. Um, I just learned that today. So we can we can do this vote. Um, we, um, it looks like a landslide. <laughs> okay, all right. Um, and any denunciations <laughs> or or replacements, volunteer replacements would be welcome if there's any conversation about that. Okay, thank you. Uh, we'll send, uh, Sue, I think all th that, uh, I just need to, s I, I will send, just note that in the, in, on our minutes and then I'll send that off to uh, their board so that they know we've taken official action. Um, speaking of official action, um, secretary's report, approval of a mi minutes. Uh, I, we need a motion to approve those minutes. So moved. All right. And is there a second? I second. I think I can second. <laughs> okay. All those in favor, raise your hand. Aye, aye. Okay. And I see Yvette's hand go up. Great. Hi, Yvette. Okay. Abed, do you want to add anything? Okay. Uh, no, um, no, I don't. Okay. Um, I, I just wondered, uh, the, the Highland Valley, uh, it, it, would Mary uh, be involved as, at all as uh, Norma was? Yeah. Um. I'm not sure your question. What your question is? Do you, are you mean? Do you mean Mary Beth? No. Um, maybe I'm uh, late here. I was just wondering about the motion so that you represent the Council on Aging with the yes. Highland Valley group. Yes. And I just wondered if Mary, uh, the nurse. That's Karen. Karen is Karen. the nurse. Oh, okay. Karen. Would she have. Um, she, would she, uh, she would not be involved in that with the Highland Valley group? No, uh, the, the particular makeup in the bylaws of Highland Valley require it from the Council on Aging. So staff is actually prohibited. The only way in which staff could participate would be, I think something to the effect of like, if there wasn't a Council on Aging, there's a certain um, exception. Okay. All right, thank so, you. Yeah, no, it has to be a member of the COA. Okay, perfect. Thanks. And, and Yvette, while you're there, um, did you want to vote on that? We didn't hear your... your yes, I, I agree. I concur. I vote. Oh, okay. Yes. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I had technical difficulties. I'm so yes. sorry. No worries. We're all learning this technology. Um, okay, so uh, let's... Uh, I think, did we vote on the minutes, accepting the minutes as written? Uh, yes, I think we we did. Um, topics not reasonably anticipated by the chair. Any new topics to bring up, folks? Okay. Um, I, no, I do have one one thing that I would just maybe. Oh no, you know, I'm right. under announcements. I'll do it under. Okay. Okay, so we'll move on to announcements. Okay. So the only other thing I would add is that at 12 noon today, um, if if your um, curiosity about health services was not satisfied in this meeting, 
Um, Paul Bockelman is the town manager, along with Jennifer Brown, our acting health director, and myself will be doing one of our community chats at 12 noon. The link would be available on the town website. So if anybody would like to participate, it's a very um, casual conversation that he holds uh, intermittently. So Jennifer will be there uh, on behalf of the town. So if you have questions around COVID, senior health, et cetera, please uh, do, if you wanna listen or, or ask questions, um, you're all invited, everybody's invited. All right, thank you for that. Thank you. Um, this week, uh, other announcements is that Yvette and I will be, no, it's not this coming week, but the following week in October, we will be attending uh, the Massachusetts Council on Aging uh, workshops with our other colleagues on councils on aging from all over the state. And so we want to uh, um, uh, offer up a, a special thank you to the friends of the uh, yeah, thank you. Center for um, supporting our participation and our connection uh, with uh, um, senior, senior centers all over the state and councils of aging all over the state. So we're really excited about that and hope to learn a great deal that we can bring back. And can I ask you something, Pat? Of course. Thank you. I and haven't Rosemary. heard from Helen um, or the Massachusetts Council on Aging about confirming that I will be attending. So do oh. you know anything about that? Maybe Mary Beth can speak to that. I have not yet heard anything yet either. Yeah, you know, that's so interesting that you mentioned that because I have not heard anything either. So, <laughs> so I will follow up for all of us, Yvette. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, I have not gotten a confirmation link. They said that that would be, is going to be the process, so I have not heard of that. Thank I'll you. follow up and I will let you um, both know about that. All right. And then uh, Rosemary. Yes, I just wanted to announce that um, I will be attending a um, webinar on transportation this afternoon. It's being put out by the Department of Transportation in Boston. And uh, I did send the email around to others um, suggesting if they were interested, they could attend also. But um, I will definitely be there. So I'll make take some notes and make a little report next meeting. That's fantastic. I really do appreciate that. Um, and um, yes, I think that really helps us. And, uh, and I appreciate the initiative um, that Rosemary's shown in this and, and welcome that sort of initiative um, as well among all council members. Um, okay, um, I, I also included uh, then uh, my, my a proposed the dates actually looking ahead for the next Council on Aging meetings and um, uh, as November 12th and December 10th. Um, and uh, I just wanted to share that um, I have my, my husband is going in for major surgery um, for hip replacement uh, in December, December 16th. And um, so, uh, I, I haven't, um, so I haven't figured out exactly, uh, more likely uh, the, uh, I, I don't know what that will bring, <laughs> but uh, in terms of, let's say the meeting, following meeting uh, in January, but I know that we'll work it out and figure it out. I just am sharing that. Um, I, I'd like to hear a motion for adjournment if there is nothing else, uh, any, no other matters to bring before us. I may make a motion that we adjourn. Mm -hmm. And I need a second. I second the motion to adjourn. All right, thank you, Yvette. Thank okay, you. and our meeting is closed. And thank you everyone for being around and present. <laughs> See you in the email. All right.